So we just said that helper T cells require two signals from antigen presenting cells in order to become activated. Helper T cells can become two different types of T cells, either helper T cell type 1 or helper T cell type 2. This all depends upon the type of pathogen that was ingested by antigen presenting cell in response to different pathogens, APCs, antigen presenting cells can produce different type of signaling molecules. So it all basically starts with the type of pathogen and then also how that pathogen is processed by antigen presenting cell. So now let's see what how these two types of cells, helper T cell type 1 and helper T cell type 2, what do they do next? So you will notice that there are two sites of infection. One is caused by micropathogen A right here and the other is caused by parasitic pathogen B right here. So this pathogen A here in this case just to distinguish let's say this pathogen A has broken in through the skin and pathogen B is present in the gut. So pathogen A when it enters the body it will encounter the immature dendritic cells right here. These dendritic cells will engulf the pathogen A, phagocytose it and they will fuse this phagosome with the lysosome degrading the pathogen A. When they do that, as we have talked about, antigen presenting cells have major histocompatibility class 2 molecules. Parts, little pieces of pathogen A will be displayed on the surface of antigen presenting cell. In this case, it is the pathogen A. Little fragments of pathogen A will be displayed with the help of MHC class 2 molecules which, which you can see right here. So now our dendritic cell is going to mature and it is going to translocate to the peripheral lymphoid organ which is this whole entity. This whole entity is peripheral lymphoid organ. So here the dendritic cell in case of our micropathogen A it will encounter the helper T cell. This in, by engulfing this pathogen, this when this dendritic cell was becoming mature, in the process it started, uh, it started producing and excreting signaling molecule called in interleukin-12. So when it encounters the helper T cell, which is not differentiated yet, it's a naive helper T cell, it is going to stimulate it. I hope you remember that we talked about that when antigen presenting cells mature, dendritic cell in this case, they start expressing co-stimulatory molecule called B7, which you can see right here. So these, these are the two signals helper T cells require to become activated. B7 molecule and foreign antigen in association with MHC2 molecule, which is right here. Additionally, this dendritic cell is producing interleukin-12 to guide our helper T cell in the direction of helper T cell type 1, this interleukin-12 will cause helper T cell to become effector helper T cell type 1. Helper T cell type 1 will migrate to the site of infection. It will stimulate macrophages by producing different types of signaling molecules and making them more efficient killer and able, which will allow these macrophages to destroy the pathogen which is present in their phagosome. So this is one route. We started with the skin infection. The bacteria was engulfed by the antigen presenting cell which went to the peripheral lymphoid organ and activated the helper T cell. Not only it activated, it guided this helper T cell in the lineage of helper T cell type 1. So this is one route. The second route, our parasitic pathogen B was encountered by immature dendritic cell right here. It did the same thing. It engulfed it, endocytosed it, it fused it with the phagosome. The phagosome was fused with the lysosome, degrading the pathogen. Little fragments of pathogen B proteins were displayed on the surface of this antigen-presenting cell right here. When this happened, 
the our antigen presenting cell our dendritic cell became also mature and it started producing co-stimulatory molecule which is B7 which is shown right here in this case so now this dendritic cell can activate T cell and in this case this our dendritic cell is not producing interleukin 12 which it was doing in the other case it's producing a different type of interleukin signaling molecule which is denoted by cytokine X but it could be it generally can be interleukin 4 for example this signaling molecule this molecule will these two signals are required for T cell activation this signaling molecule is required to guide T cell into a particular lineage which happens to be a factor helper T cell type 2 helper T cell type 2 will not go and stimulate the macrophages or cytotoxic T cells which was in the case of helper T cell type 1 it will stimulate B cells causing them these B cells to become effector B cells and also these help B cells switch the class of antibodies we have talked about that different types of antibody classes so this is the process of how these dendritic cells and when they first encounter the pathogen what do they do and how they activate not only activate T cells they also guide these T cells into a particular lineage so let's look at these two different scenarios in more detail first of all let's see how helper T cell type 1's they function as you have just seen they are activated by the antigen presenting cell this antigen presenting cell the dendritic cell is displaying B seven molecules since it is a mature dendritic cell this is a second stimulation second signal the first signal is through class 2 MHC protein in association with the foreign peptide signaling the T cell receptor and this is the second signal this will activate the helper T cell the lineage will be guided by production of interleukin 12 by the dendritic cell which will cause this naive helper D cell to become mature and it will become a helper T cell effector helper T cell type 1 helper T cell type 1 will migrate to the site of infection helper T cells when they are activated by the dendritic cells they also become mature when they become mature and effector cells they start displaying a special protein on their surface which is called CD40 ligand right here the CD40 ligand will interact with CD40 on the which is present on the surface of macrophages these two protein interaction will also result in activation of this macrophage combined with the signaling molecule interferon gamma this will result in activation of this macrophage now this macrophage will be able to digest and destroy the pathogen which it had captured in its phagosome so we have just seen how dendritic cells activate not only activate helper T cells but they guide them towards a specific lineage now we we'll, in the next module we are going to see how dendritic cells can guide the T cells helper T cells into a different type of lineage which is helper T cell type 2 lineage